Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Dana Dunford. Thanks for being on the show, Dana. Great. Thanks, Whitney, for having me. Dana is the CEO of Hemlane, a technology-enabled property management platform. She is a strong advocate of purchasing properties anywhere, as the best investments are not, not typically in your backyard. She supports real estate investors in setting up the most intelligent process to manage rentals from a distance, while connecting them with local licensed professionals. In 2018, she was named one of the top 20 women leaders and influencers in commercial real estate tech. Dana, thank you again for your time. I'm, I'm very interested in this, you know, setting up the most intelligent process. You know, as technology is like, has changed all of our businesses. And if it hasn't changed your business, you've been left behind, right? You know, so yep. I'm looking forward to this conversation, but tell the listeners, you know, a little more about you and maybe tell them a little more about Hemlane and, and, and let's jump in. Yeah, great. Thanks, Whitney. Um, my background has always been in uh, technology. I started at Apple, uh, moved over to a home technology company called Nest, um, which was acquired by uh, Google for $3.2 billion. And um, then as I was in the real estate investing world, uh, realized that the industry really needed, um, needed some uh, new technology. When you look at software out there uh, for owner operators, for property managers, it was very much of built 10 to 20 years ago uh, where there wasn't this do it for me uh, mentality. It was, you know, here's everything you can do, pick and choose what you want to do. Um, the trend these days with technology and building it is providing a user experience where it already has best in class practices built in to really mitigate that risk um, with property management, which is definitely something you wanna do, whether you're an owner operator and you bring the employees in house to manage your uh, rental units, or whether you're using a third party property manager, having best in class process of making sure screening reports are done, making sure rent collection is set up, making sure lease renewals are done. Um, really building that into the technology was what we saw as the next wave that was needed. Um, and also surprise and delighting customers. Um, you know, there's no reason why uh, your leasing agent needs to respond to every email immediately. You can have smart technology do that. A tenant inquires about your property, you can just automatically go in and respond. Um, so it was really taking a lot of what we see here in Silicon Valley and uh, giving it to the real estate investing world. Wow. Okay. So, you know, why don't you tell us some of the, the best in class practices that are built in the software that, or th that we should expect, or, or maybe things that we don't even know. I mean, knows out there, you know, that's an option that would help us probably optimize or, or be more efficient. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first one has to do with advertising of your rental property. When you look out there today, um, and this is for who's ever doing your leasing uh, for you, when you look out there today, you have no idea where a tenant is looking, um, right? And it could be on Facebook Marketplace. It could be on Zillow. It could be on PadMapper because 10 years ago that was popular and they still think that's popular. Uh, and so we go ahead and we advertise it out to all 30 rental listing websites. Um, on average, there's 21 inquiries per every vacant unit on our platform. Um, that obviously changes based on, on demand. Um, but with that, uh, tenants are very impatient. They, um, Zillow did a study that found out they go and reach out to an average of five landlords, but the first three to respond are the ones that they actually look at. So we use smart technology to automatically respond to tenants, take the showing calendar of the leasing agent, automatically set up those showings, pre-qualify the tenant, and then the technology continues to work through. So when someone um, you know, walks in the door for a showing, the moment they leave, we send an email to that tenant letting them know, here's the application. If you're interested, please apply. So we're taking a lot of what a tenant would want as an experience and putting that into the technology to make it better for your local um, support who's ever on the ground doing your management um, and better for you as a real estate investor because you want to see that in your bottom line. 
Nice. So before you give us more practices that we're looking for or things that's going to help us to yeah. be more efficient, you know, is this, is this software really something that's going to help uh, through the leasing process specifically, or is it a management software as well? It's management as well. So with uh, financials, online rent collection, automatic lease fees, everything goes through. Um, it goes through the full rental life cycle. Okay. And is there, uh, you know, like the property management, uh, you know, company dashboard, then also the owner dashboard, or is it two separate things or is it kind of all in one? What is it? How does that function? Yeah, we believe that it should be one um, with separate permissions. And um, what I mean by that is it's the same look if you're a property manager as if you're an owner. Um, but you could essentially, if you're the owner, turn off notifications. In other words, I don't want a notification every time a tenant opens a maintenance request. I want my maintenance team to do that, or I want it to automatically route to my, um, uh, to my handyman first for initial troubleshooting. Whatever it may be, um, we put that in there. But one of the, the strongest things we believe in is that data is power. And if you look at most systems, property management platforms, how they're built, they're built, built for a property manager where the property manager can hide things from owners. We don't believe in that. Um, as an owner, this is your asset. It is your financial future. Um, we believe you should be able to see that data. Um, you might not want the notifications on it, um, but you should also have access to it. So we built it where the property manager and the owner can see this exact same thing. So if you did want to drill into the details, you could. We found the best property managers also love that. The best property managers do not want their owner calling, asking what the status is of something. They just, they know they're on top of everything. The owner can go in and take a look if they want to see the details. But we found that to be super successful in the quality of the local um, professionals who are on the ground, as well as for a real estate investor, having that peace of mind that things are taken care of. Nice. No, I like that. And and so to go back to, you know, those, those practices we were talking about, you know, you, you were talking about the advertising piece first and, and how it responds to tenants or how they can even book an appointment online to, to look at it, you know, to view a, a unit and things like that. And yeah. I, I've seen that, you know, obviously I look at other, other apartment yeah. buildings and what the other operators are doing. And I see that and I'm like, oh, that's nice. Cause like you said, tenants, you know, they are impatient. And, and I remember those times, you know, you're trying to find a unit, you're, you know, a lot of times it's like, I need something this weekend, you know, is what a lot of tenants are doing. And so it's nice if they can book a time to see a unit right away. Um, and so, you know, what, what's some other, or are you going to add anything else to that? You want to the advertising piece and then, you know, let's go to the next or something else as far as, you know, pieces that are built in that maybe, you know, we're not aware that's even available. Yeah, I, I think um, just to add on to that point of the advertising throughout the entire process, um, tenants have become and will continue to become, if you look at trends, um, more impatient. You know, they go on to any website nowadays and it's Sunday at 2 a.m. in the morning and they can chat with a local agent to get what they need. Hey, Amazon, my package didn't arrive. Can you give me an update? And they have a live operator on the other end. And so with property management, they assume the same. They assume everything's going to be real time. So if you wait a day to get back to them, even a weekend, right? Because mentally people can't work 24 hours a day, seven days of the week, you've already lost that opportunity. And so um, it really does, as much as you can build technology into your process, to act as that human where you don't need some sort of strategic thinking. There are certain things technology can't do. And I can talk about those as well with you. Um, but for anything where you can use technology, you actually should. And um, one of the, the biggest misconceptions I see is, oh, I, I don't wanna pay for software, it's expensive. I'm like, oh, have you actually calculated how much your time's worth? Because it is way cheaper than um, you putting that time in of what, what that value is. Okay. Well, uh, you know, can you elaborate on the smart tech or how it responds to emails and things like that, like you're talking about? Yeah. So um, some of the coolest things with our upgraded packages, um, it's maintenance coordination is one huge one. Um, what you see is that a lot of tenants actually don't even understand maintenance these days. They put in requests for things that easy troubleshooting could do for them. Um, so part of our packages, like one of our packages has maintenance coordination built in. We're responding and troubleshooting for you 
real time with the tenant everything that they need to do before we're even sending out the service professional for it. And is, so is, it, that, is that something automated doing that? Or is that like an actual live person that's responding or, or talking it, to them? It's a combination of both. We have um, troubleshooting that's already built into guides in the technology. And then if that doesn't solve it, we get a human in there. So it's a combination of both. And it will um, over time become more technology. Right now it's, it's about 50-50. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Anything else about, you know, how it responds or how it knows how to respond to what they're putting? I'm sure it's picking out keywords and things like that or. Uh, yeah. I, th that? I, I think one of the biggest things, yeah, it picks out keywords, categories, things like that. Um, I think the biggest thing is that we do know when you really have to worry about this as an owner operator, especially if you hire an employee, right, to do your property management, really understand tenant landlord law. I think that's something that we're really strong in in the sense that like if a tenant says their light bulbs burnt out the response is not great replace it yourself that's your responsibility the next thing is how high are those ceilings the last mm -hmm. thing you want is a tenant on a on a ladder and it's a 20-foot ceiling or a 15-foot ceiling and they fall off and they sue you right and so there's a lot that has to be built into it it's not so much of this is exactly how things should work. There's a lot of algorithms built into there, if then, right? Of, you know, what, what is the next thing? What should I be, should be asking? Because there is a lot of liability with property management, um, which makes it one of those, um, as a real estate investors, a, a risky, the risk, most risky part of that investment is how well is it managed? Very interesting. I may not have thought to ask, well, how high is the ceiling or how high is that light bulb you're trying to replace? Yep. Wow. We've, okay. we've, then, we've seen it all. What about, you know, numerous different states? You all are, are you, can you all have that same kind of uh, ability in, in numerous states at the moment? Yeah, so we're in all 50 states. Um, as far as local, um, local service professionals, um, there are certain cities where we've built up a really good list of service professionals. There's other cities where we don't have anyone. And we say, you should bring in your own service professionals. We could source for you, but we don't know how good they're going to be. We're going to ask the local real estate agents who do investing in your area or work with investors who are the best. Um, but that's something um, that you may want to source. And so we work across the nation, our maintenance coordination, um, but um, there are certain areas where we are um, more connected to the, the local professionals in that area. Okay, so help us, you know, help us to continue to set up this, this most intelligent process, you know, yeah. anything else, let's say, let's say the, the, our management company already has a contract on software that they have to use for so long, and we can't just switch to something as amazing as yours. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's some other things that we can do to help, you know, really be more intelligent uh, with our process? Yeah, I, I think there's a couple of things. One, um, with your own property managers, you can figure out how good they are by how they align incentives. That starts with their own, their own pricing for you, right? For example, if they're saying, hey, we take the late fees, you don't get the late fees, what's their incentive to make sure the tenants pay on time? They're, they're making revenue. They have like a revenue line item called late fees. That, right, should be going to you. Um, and then, you know, as far as their visibility with maintenance and the invoices, right? If they're not providing you with a service professional's invoice, if they're providing their own, but it's a third party service professional, you know, where is the transparency in that? So I, I think a lot of it has to do with you at the beginning, vetting the service professionals. And the best way to do that is to get to know a little bit about property management. Ask mm -hmm. them questions. What would you do in this situation? What would you do in this situation? The maintenance one is a perfect example of, you know, how, how well set up are they? Um, so that's number one, um, I would say. And then number two with it is, is really work with um, your property manager, no matter what system they're on, to make sure you have those best practices in place with them. Lease renewals and aligning incentives. You know, you shouldn't just say, hey, if you renew, I'm going to increase your rent this much for the year, renew, right, or, or move out. You should be, hey, if you want to go month to month, that's great, but I'm increasing the rent by X percentage. If you do an annual lease, I'm going to raise it, but by not as much because you're signing up for another year. 
trying to make sure these incentives are aligned, no matter what software they're using, making sure the property manager has that put into place. Um, and if they're not using software, probably a sign you shouldn't work with them. Or if they're using something that's really old and you know, right now doesn't have great, great reviews and isn't top trending. Nice. Yeah. And so any other questions that, that, that we should know to ask that maybe we wouldn't know on, on that topic? Uh, I mean, just like their software or what their software can do. Yeah. Um, so without going too much into the software, I think look at the rental life cycle and ask one question in each, right? So start with the leasing process and ask them, right? Um, how do you pre-qualify your tenants? What, what do you do in that process? See how they respond, right? In the application in the background um, check, ask them, you know, uh, what do you pull and um, what are you verifying? Are you verifying their um, employer or are you just looking at their credit score and that's it? Are you looking at the full picture, right? Then go on to, you know, move in, right? Um, you know, are you asking for security deposit and first month's rent up front? If you're not, that could fall through, right? And then you can have more vacancy. Um, so you can ask that stuff. One of the things I found that isn't that great with a lot of these managers is when you say like, how many days on average are your rentals on the market? A lot of times, like they don't know the data behind that. They're not pulling it and checking averages. So they just give you some random number of, oh, it's always under 30 days or something like that. That's not really helpful in understanding their thought process and how much they know about management. Mm. Okay. Any other, and I love this intelligent stuff or, you know, things that we don't know that are even out there yet. Anything else that that's going to help us, you know, get through this process or make it more smooth, even, even maybe that your system does. I was thinking about even like being the function to be able to, you know, automatically text tenants or, you know, uh, you know, about their late fees or, or, or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I do think um, as far as, as what's helpful for you, it's a combination of knowing a little bit about the process to understand um, when you vet your property managers, but putting together KPIs. The best real estate investors in multifamily have monthly meetings with their property managers. If you have a large portfolio, it's probably weekly. Mm -hmm. These meetings are not fluff. How are you? How's your dog? How's the portfolio doing? These meetings are 30 minutes beforehand at least, or maybe sometimes 24 hours. I need a file and here are my KPIs, my key performance indicators. This is exactly what I need to know. And most of these softwares were not, not have the best KPIs in there. You need to come up with them and say, this is exactly how I track performance, right? If you can come up with that and then meet with the, your manager who's ever on the ground, to be able to talk about each one of those metrics every single time, you will see that your portfolio will start doing better over time. I see too much of, yeah, I have weekly or monthly calls with my manager, but there's no concrete data. And it's like, oh, well, it's what my property manager provides to me from their automated system. I don't care what their system provides. You have certain KPIs that you need to meet and that's gonna help dictate how, how you do. Don't let the property manager decide what those KPIs are. Awesome. That's, I hope the listeners are listening to that. Uh, I mean, that alone is just amazing information. And, and I hope you're doing that. We do that. And, and I, but I wonder, like, what, you know, what KPIs that we're not requesting that we should be? And, and could you go through some that like, okay, you know, at least these things you need to be requesting, you know, in the, before that meeting that your, you know, your property management company is providing? Yeah, so I, I think the, the biggest ones, right, are, are vacancy rates and knowing right. here's a KPI, a vacancy rate of what I need, but also here's what I expect, right, mm -hmm. and have that. Um, then it's for all of the units that are rented. What are they renting at and what's market rate? How much would you potentially, are you losing or so? And, and maybe you update that um, monthly or have some sort of seasonality factor in there. Right, um, but understanding that, then looking at um, maintenance expenses, what percentage of your um, of, of rent are your maintenance expenses, and tracking that over time and seeing how that plays out, and then also understanding how do we reduce the operating expenses, right? How do we reduce maintenance expenses and things like that 
so that we're preventing things, we're not reactive and just fixing things, right? Um, so I think those are super important, um, you know, vacancy rate as well as how's your cash flow doing. Um, there are certain things that you will dig into more mm -hmm. and ask for additional KPIs if things aren't working out. So for example, if you have high vacancy rate, it's great, what are we renting the places at? And um, what are the comparable units um, in, the, in the market? What are those renting at? How many days on market are others versus ours? Understanding certain things. So you can dig into the details, but start at the high level metrics and then dig in when you need to. Um, you know, if you see that rent, you have evictions or something like that, you're gonna say, great, what percentage of our tenants pay on time? What percentage are late, et cetera. So you can actually dig into them, but start with the high levels first. Nice. I'm taking lots of notes and I hope the listeners <laughs> are as well. So that's great information. And, and really to have this laid out, I know we just have a very simple list, uh, you know, that, that we, you know, we want this information before our meetings, uh, you know, from the property management company. And, and it's, it does, it provides lots of ways that we can track information. You know, my assistant then knows like where to put this information on some sheets yeah. that we use to track, you know, just over periods of time, you know, what's happening. And then we can see it, you know, per property, you know, what's happening here, what's that, or see trends. And then we can look back and say, you know, you know, wait a minute, you know, what happened here? How did, what caused this increase in vacancy or occupancy or, you know, uh, or expenses or that, you know, what happened over here to this maintenance and that, you know, that month there was this, you know, it went way up or down. Uh, and so no, that's such good information there. So uh, Dana, anything else about, you know, the smart technology or, or, you know, just the, the intelligent process or improving that before we, before we move on? Um, one thing I would say uh, related to my last point is it also depends on how many units, the units you own. In other words, if you own only 20 units and you're just getting started and you go to property managers and say, this is my process and you have to provide me all these one-off reports, you may not get it, right? Um, yeah. So keep that in mind versus if you have a lot more units, the property managers will bend over backwards, which is the uh, great thing about syndication, right? And um, owning larger portfolios is you do have a lot more control over that. Nice. And do you all offer like partial services? Let's say, you know, we're already using this other software to track finances and other things and we have a contract, but, but maybe we need help on that leasing side or maybe the, the maintenance, you know, uh, tickets and things like that, you know, or, or just, you know, improving the intelligent process. Is that an option? Yeah, we get at that question a lot. Um, in order for it all to work seamlessly together, starting with leasing and management, we just have packages for the whole thing. However, we do have a lot of people who pay for the full package, but they're just using us for leasing. And so just when their properties are vacant, they just use us for that and they use their software for something else. Um, or they use us for everything and, and some other software for accounting, which we see quite a bit. Okay. Are, are you a real estate investor yourself? Uh, yes, I'm a real estate investor myself. Um, smaller units, though, than your guys is uh, what you guys do. Uh, much more of a mom and pop. Well, how do you prepare for this potential downturn that everybody's talking about? You know, it's interesting. I've been talking about the downturn for a while and people here in the office laugh about it and they say, um, you know, Dana, you keep saying winter is coming. Um, and um, what I would say from that perspective of, um, you know, uh, with a downturn is there's always opportunities, right? It's a fantastic time to invest when you have a downturn. And so what you should be doing is constantly figuring out with your portfolio, maybe you do want to hold on to a bit of cash now, right? So that when a downturn comes, there's, there's an opportunity out there. So I think when the market's doing well, there's great things about that. But when the market's doing bad, there's also fantastic things about it for real estate investors. And the biggest thing for you is to, to keep track of what those trends are right? And to be looking at macroeconomics as well as microeconomics within certain geographies and locations, um, it will make you much better. And then if you diversify as much as possible, um, you do hedge some risk there. So make sure you're diversifying. Not everything should be in equity um, or in assets, right? You need some things in bonds. You need to be able to balance out your portfolio. Mm. 
Great advice. And Dana, what's a, what's a way you've recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? Um, I think the, the biggest thing is hiring more people. Um, that is one thing I will say a, a lot of times, and I see this with most real estate investors is they try to do everything. And by trying to do everything yourself, um, you don't, don't do anything well. And so really making sure that we're hiring subject matter experts. And the reason I'm a fan of subject matter experts is, you know, hire someone for things you don't want to do and hire someone who's so good at that. Um, and it really does make your business grow significantly. What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? I think it's hard work. Um, I think it really is hard work. I'll say that um, from day one, you know, uh, I used to be working and pulling all nighters. Um, I don't do that anymore, um, but I definitely do work really long hours. And I think that attention to detail on certain things and really questioning everything um, with that hard work, when you're working hard, you're always questioning everything um, really, really helps contribute to it. And tell us how you like to give back. Um, give back. So a couple of things. One, my husband and I, he's a huge surfer. We donate to the ocean. Um, I know that's, uh, that's probably one that's a little bit fluffy and uh, what people in San Francisco do, but um, we donate to the Salmon um, Foundation here. We also donate to the ocean um, conservation efforts. Um, so that's a huge way we give back. The other is education. I love educating people on real estate, real estate investing and how they could do better. Awesome. Well, great show, Dana. Uh, just, I, I love talking about how to it just increase our processes and use intelligence to do that. And, you know, you're elaborating on just the advertising and I mean, numerous points that you talked about having the KPIs and having that uh, requesting that the day before a weekly meeting and things like that. The, the, the need for responding quickly to tenants and how important that is through the leasing process uh, and so much more. Uh, but, you know, most importantly right now, tell the tenants, uh, the tenants, the listeners, <laughs> how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you and your business. Yeah, uh, you can go to hemlane.com, which is H-E-M-L-A-N-E.com. You can also reach out to me, Dana at hemlane.com and Dana is D-A-N-A. -A. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.